Hello everyone, welcome to William and the Magic Box. Today on our show, we are going to have Trick. Trick is from Nashville in Tennessee in the USA. So let's see what Trick has to say. Enjoy the interview. So hello Trick, how are you? Doing all right, how are you? I'm doing very well, thanks so much for taking the time this morning for the interview, thank you. Of course. I like your teddy bears on your in your right hand side. Oh yes, yep. I have a I have a collection. It's wow. I don't know if you see them. Those are all like old Beanie Babies from when they were like really popular back. Uh -huh. to, you know? <laughs> and I've I've held on to them and I still have them. And wow. So I, I, you always, you always, um, you always liked those teddy bears. Yeah, it's I don't know. There's I like, I like them. They're cute. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting yeah. because you know, of course, as a child growing up, you always received those. And um, uh, the last two I had, uh, I was keeping um, for let's say for the last ten over ten years in my bed every single day. It was two of them. And my godson, uh, last two years ago, um, I sent my godson in Canada because he's just three years old. I said, okay, I'm going to send to him because I couldn't get rid of them. I, I felt like they were real <laughs> for me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and I, I played with stuffed animals for a long time as a kid. You know, I would make up stories with them and that kind of thing. But they were taken away from me when I was seven because I was, I was a boy. And, you know, those aren't, you know, you can't have them anymore type thing. <laughs> So, whatever. Um, you kept them. <laughs> well, no, it's I don't have those from when I was a kid. Though, but you know, as an adult, I started like collecting those, and there's you know, they're just a. I like I like you know I like things that are cute. You know, I got some little like little like oh. dragons there. You know, and I actually have like tubs of. Of <laughs> Beanie Babies upstairs that I don't even have out, you know. So, trick, tell and I've not bought any. Like literally, I've not bought any in twenty years. I've just had wow. these and and <laughs> had these, you know, for forever. So amazing, amazing. So, trick, tell me where you're from. Uh, that's a loaded question. I live in Nashville, Tennessee, right now. Um, but I was a military kid. I was born in in Kingsville, Texas. And lived in uh, Florida, Virginia, Tennessee, and California growing up. Went to 12 different schools, kindergarten through 12th grade. Wow. Uh, so moved around quite a bit. Um, so I really don't have like, when people ask you where you're from, it's like, well, I live in Nashville. We'll just go with that. But because I really don't have like a place that I consider like I grew up, you know, because I grew up all over the place. So. Amazing. And do, do, when you look back, do you see that for you it was a good thing to happen or it was, when you look back for you, was something more difficult, of course, like changing school, making new friends, sometimes can be difficult. Yeah. Yeah. There, as an adult looking back, there, there are positives and there are negatives. You know, positives it allowed me to meet a lot of different types of people, a lot of different, you know, areas of the country and different cultures, you know going from small town Munford, Tennessee to San Diego, California, it's very, very different in those two places. You know, you have one place where there's like literally elementary high school next to each other. That's it. And going, you know, out to California and it's lots, <laughs> lots and lots of people in San Diego, you know, so it's, it's just a, different. And, um, so there's, you know, positive being able to see all the different cultures. The negative is I didn't really develop the skills to build and maintain long-term friendships until I was much older. You know, there's, you can make friends all you want, <laughs> but being able to maintain those friendships, um, that is a different skill set. And that is something when you are in, you know, one school or a couple of different schools growing up, you have that ability to build those long-term friendships you know you deal with conflicts and figure out how to navigate better and that kind of thing so um 
I missed that out, out on that as a kid. So I had to learn a lot of that by trial by fire as an adult. Um, but, you know, it's it has given me the shape that I need to be where I am spiritually now. Um, so it was, you know, yeah, I would have loved to have grown up with people, but at the same time, it's what made me who I am now. So can't, um, can't fault it for that. <laughs> Absolutely. I think, you know, there's things in life, it just meant to happen. And, uh, you know, with up and downs, with the positive and negative side as well, as a, when you can see as an adult that was part of the journey, it's, that's how we accept it. And you have mm -hmm. siblings as well? What was that? Oh, I have siblings? Yeah. Uh, I do have... Um, I grew up with two sisters and I have an older half brother that I didn't learn about until I was 22. <laughs> so didn't even know he existed until I was 22 years old. Um, oh. and he's, you know, seven, eight years older now. Uh, you know, one of my, uh, the, my sisters are eight and 10 years younger than me. Um, mm -hmm. the eight year younger sister did pass away in 2017. Um, so that's, um, you know, so how life goes sometimes, unfortunately. So, all right, okay. So, during the join, I'm going to explore a little bit more about your life overall and also about your point of views. Okay, okay. So, Trick, before we start our join, we in the magic box. I can see behind you, like very visible. Yeah, Madonna. Wow, <laughs> of course, <laughs> I can see here. I can see three, you know, three big pictures of her. Oh, five actually six seven eight wow they're actually they're actually records those are 12 inch Rec records absolutely um, you know, okay so happened. so let's start the interview talking about you know this fascination this love about <laughs> madonna well i i was once told that every gay man has a diva and madonna has been my diva and granted you know there are other female musicians that i hold in high regard like Dolly Parton and Janet Jackson and you know others in that ilk um but you know she's the one that that I connected with early and I followed her career and I've a you know appreciated how she's always been there for the gay community um she you know uh and really was forefront in pushing you know for AIDS research and making sure that HIV, you know, was not forgotten about, um, you know, even in, you know, the eighties when <laughs> a lot of other people were trying to shove it under the rug, she was talking about it and bringing it out. So um, I know she's, a lot of people kind of see her as the punchline nowadays. I mean, she's 65 years old, you know, and um, a lot of people are like making fun of her recent plastic surgery, but if you see the pictures now, she looks fantastic. She just was showing you the process of each step of healing from those kind of surgeries. But now you see her in the concert, she looks great. Um, I had tickets to see her in Nashville, but she had to cancel the show in Nashville because of her illness where she was hospitalized and she had to push back her tour. And she ended up canceling some dates. So I was a little disappointed in that, but, <laughs> but, you know, she's, she's always been one that's, you know, stuck up for our community, but also, um, you know, I've always appreciated how she was able to merge her spirituality and her sexuality as well. Um, you know, she's very, you know, she's a very spiritual person, but she's also a very sexual person. And mm -hmm. she, she doesn't, she doesn't, allow the she um she integrates both of those things into her work and in her persona um you know and like and like i said some of the stuff she does is kind of cringe nowadays she's a 65 year old white woman it's gonna happen <laughs> you know i mean let's just be honest i mean not every white woman can be dolly parton who you know really <laughs> is it you know there's not Dolly is a saint, so there's a whole different thing with that, you know. So, you know, I'm, anyway, uh, I can go on about Dolly Parton. <laughs> yeah, I think she's Madonna. The one thing, 
Dolly Parton is the one thing in Tennessee that unites the entire state, be them, you know, progressive, conservative, race, gender. No, you cannot say a bad thing about Dolly Parton in the state of Tennessee and get away with it. She is wow. just one of those, you know, she's, she's charitable. She's, you know, apolitical. She loves everybody just the way they are. She's just, you know, you know, she, she literally built an economy from scratch in her hometown to bring jobs. Wow. You know, she created a theme park to bring jobs to her hometown where they didn't have any, you know? Wow. So not many people like, live as authentically in their faith and their spirituality as Dolly Parton. So amazing. I, actually, I had some guests on the show and they they are big fan of her and they love her as well. And also, of course, Madonna as well. I had the interview yeah. last night actually with a, a lovely man from Johannesburg and he he said, William, Madonna is my godmother. <laughs> <laughs> so interesting. Yeah. Tricky, are you ready to go on a beautiful journey through your memories in life and share your point of views? What? Yes. Amazing. Welcome to William in the magic box. So I've got <laughs> him my best friend. Full of wonderful questions, okay? I'm just gonna play a song now just for us to relax a bit before the first question, okay? Okay. Let's do it. All right, so before we start the game, during the join, if it comes up a question that you don't want to talk about some reason you don't want to answer, always can change, okay? Okay. Right, first question. For, mm, great, great question. What does love mean to you? Uh, love is... Love means everything to me. Um, I am a strong believer in loving everybody in your life, offering love to everyone that you meet. Um, and, you know, the love takes a lot of different forms, you know, so you have your romantic love, you have your spiritual love, you have all, you know, the different aspects. But I've, you know, I was... I was raised a Christian, even though I'm kind of, my spirituality is very um, kind of bigger than that box now. But one of the things that always um, got, you know, got to me is, you know, there's a, there's scripture says God is love. Okay. And, you know, and so a lot of spirituality is like, you know, we'll talk about you are, you are God and you are, have that spirit in you. So you have that love spirit in you. The key is to be able to share that and to let it shine and to be able to, you know, express it with all, everybody around you. Um, you know, Prince, um, I'm a big fan of Prince as well. <laughs> so, and on his, um, I think it was his Love Sexy album, there's a, there's a, there's a bit where he goes in and about, you know, talking about, you know, God is love, love is God, you know, and just talks about, you know, that's who we are. Um, and, you know, so I just, I'm just believe strongly that the love is the core of who we are and we need to express it and share it. And when we, when we cut ourselves off from sharing that love, that's when we feel the most lonely and we allow the, the, more darkness to come in and and kind of take over um because that love loves to be shared and and it's that there's that cycle of love that you know when you put it out you get it back and you know and even if you put it out and you do not receive it the way you want you're still putting it out and you're you just keep putting it out and you'll find that that energy will find the people that will give you what you want back and 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 how that love it goes and then once again not just romantic but spiritual and you know when you are kind of living in that flow those right people are attracted to you because they feel that energy and they feel like that there's something there with you 
and they they want to be nearer that love and they want to share that love with you so um so that's kind of my take on love it's kind of you know kind of a little out there so a little bit but <laughs> that's I, just i am totally is. with you i think love you know there are different kinds of love and all of them it, when they have this feeling come from this beautiful gives butterflies give you you know sometimes you know these emotions i think when come from that place doesn't matter which kind of love this is the real love and it can go different directions that's how i believe as well next question let's do it <laughs> Okay, next question for you is, what was your favorite thing to do as a kid? Ooh, um, well, it would depend on where I was living. <laughs> Just <if you laughs> yeah. places are different, different things. Um, but I know when I lived out in the country uh, in Munford, Tennessee, my favorite thing to do was just get on my bike and ride. And I would just, you know, ride wherever, um, you know, that was one of my favorite things there. Uh, in California, my favorite thing was like there, we lived in military housing and we were mm -hmm. like on the side of like canyons. So wow. even though we weren't supposed to, I would hop the fence and like go into the canyon and just kind of like the nature thing of it. Um, you know, so that was, I enjoyed that a lot. Um, but a lot of uh, the thing that I always that I always came back to no matter where I was, was my obsession with music wow. and uh, listening to, listen to music and, you know, you know, Madonna was one of them, but I was also a big Debbie Gibson fan when I was a kid, uh, you know, you know, so, um, cause I think her first album came out when I was like six or seven, something like that. Uh, so, you know, um, I had cassette singles and I'd go around with my Walkman and I had a <laughs> my record player Walkman. and I had four fives. Walkman, you know, remember this Walkman. Oh my God. <laughs> yep. Yep. And I had a, uh, you know, little 45 records, like, let me just pull one up. Yeah. Like 45 records. Wow. Um, <laughs> so, um, but that I would, you know, listen to. So, and I would, you know, there was just, it was kind of my escape and, and I've always, you know, now I collect music. I have over 6,000 pieces wow. in my collection between records, CDs and cassettes. So, wow. um, and I actually have a podcast where I talk music too. So it's kind really? of, I have a podcast. Yeah. It's called tricky notes. Oh my God. I didn't know that wasn't, wasn't, I don't know if it was in your profile. It couldn't, I don't think it was there. It's not because I, I, it went on hiatus and I just let him relaunching it. Like now. I see. <laughs> I see. Okay. Like, amazing. Like, yeah. So I thought about like doing a YouTube channel with it too, but I, I can't figure out how to do that yet. So we'll see. But, amazing. but I just love talking about music and like the different stuff I do and expose people to different music that they may not have heard of you know stuff i like to do so music it's like i can't live without music i don't have a collection as you i don't collect music but i i music is around me like for the day for the night i'm always with music it, it brings me good energy it brings me this um you know well thoughts as madonna say music makes them beautiful <laughs> yes <laughs> No, and, and see, and one of the reasons I still collect physical media because, you know, some stuff's not available in streaming, you know, um, you know, there's like, there's like Shaka Khan has an entire album that you cannot find online. And it's because it was on NPG records, which was a Prince estate. So it's tied up in all that mess. <laughs> you know, there's, um, uh, I was looking at, you know, there's, uh, Living and John had some stuff missing on streaming. Um, uh, Crystal Gale had some stuff missing on streaming, but then you also have remixes that aren't on streaming that you know I still collect. You know, like all, all the ones up on the wall, they're not. They're all like the re Madonna remixes. You know, the from the you know the twelve inch remixes. So you know, it's not all those are on streaming. So I still collect 
you know, because and there's you never know when something's going to be pulled off stream and you're not going to be able to see it, you know, Oops. have it. Anymore. So okay. I, I like I like the fact that I, you know having that ownership and be able to and I can still share it, you know. So amazing, very good. Ready for another one? Yep, yeah, sure. Let's, Let's go. go with next question. <laughs> Hey, next question for you is, if you could be in somebody's place, in somebody's skin for 24 hours, who that would be and why? You know, I I don't think there, uh, that I would because, I, I, you know, everybody has their own unique journey and their, their own thing. And even just stepping in for a day, you're not going to have all that context and that, you know, what made them who they are today and what ha got them where they are. And, you know, and sometimes if you do know that history, sometimes, you know, people change and people grow and, and all that. So I'd rather just let people show me what they want to show and let people do instead of swapping with somebody. I love your answer. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. Let's do it. Hey, Tricky, before the next question, tell me um, how is being gay in Nashville? Well, uh, in your experience, uh, do you think it's a safe place to be? People can, you know, be their truly self. Um, and mm -hmm. the other part of the question is, what's the postcard of Nashville? If I would come to Nashville for the very first time, what's something that I should go to see it? Oh, goodness, that's such a... So I do think Nashville is a fairly safe place to to be out and be open. Um, not everywhere in the state of Tennessee is, unfortunately. Uh, mm -hmm. But for as far as Nashville, um, and there are a few other cities in the state, you know, you can be yourself. And, and there is um, a pretty wide, uh, wide community in Nashville with a lot of different interests. Uh, you have your softball, you have your volleyball, you know, you have your sports, your rugby and all that. You have your leather group, you have your music groups, you, you know, there's a lot of different places that you can fit in and you can find a space, um, but you have to be willing to seek out <laughs> that, you know, um, so, but as far as like, like a postcard of Nashville, um, it depends <laughs> on what, what you like, because uh, one of the, <laughs> um, we do have an infestation in Nashville of roving bands of bachelorette parties in downtown Nashville at all times of the year. And these, they just go in and they're just like, it's, they are all about themselves. And it's, so you do have to watch out for them. <laughs> and okay. I joke about them because they're just having a good time, but you know, sometimes they don't realize that other people are like living around them. They're just kind of in their own little bubble. <laughs> so I'm, I'm very happy that they get to celebrate. They just uh, need to be a little bit more aware. <laughs> um, but, you know, so like, you know, Broadway and all that is, is kind of like the tourist destination of Nashville. That's where all the honky tonks are, you know, lots of music and all that great stuff. But if someone were to... Um, if I were going to give someone a tour in Nashville, I would take them to other places. I'd take them to the Parthenon, um, which is amazing. We have like a full replica of the Parthenon from Greece in downtown Nashville. Wow. It's just, just, and, you know, there's a story behind it. I'm not going to get into it, but, um, <laughs> but it's, it's like literally, I think it's only like three quarters of an inch off, like the full <laughs> Parthenon from Greece. Um, oh. But I'll also take them to places like the Loveless Cafe, which is a fantastic restaurant that's kind of, you know, that is very touristy, but it is worth going to. But then I'd take them out to to Prince's Hot Chicken, which is a very Nashville thing. Um, you know, just kind of get them away from Honky Tonks and like show them the other aspects of the city. Um, so basically, if I were to do a postcard, I would probably have um have it either of the kind of like the maybe like the river um mm -hmm. uh that goes through nashville or you know maybe 
princes are loveless. That's, I mean, obviously I'm, I'm, I'm a thick, so I know, I definitely know how to eat. So that's, you know, <laughs> that's a Mac. So Very good. Statement. I'll come to you. I'll come to you for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Next question is, what keeps you up at night? Uh, currently not really anything, but it, what used to, what used to really keep me up at night was that, that constant fear of not being enough and, um, and wondering if people actually liked you. Um, you know, that was, you know, several years ago and I've had some amazing friends come into my life that have really helped me kind of turn uh, some of that around. Um, one of those is, um, is, is a guy named Ray Dalton. Uh, he is a, you know, uh, adult performer <laughs> and does, you know, porn and all that stuff. And um, he, he, him and I have become very, very good friends. And I help him with his, his business, which um, is called fornication. And he puts on drug free, sex parties around the country to oh. get people a, a place to where they can you know have fun without without the drugs in the community being, a, being an issue and it's a safe place where everybody's loved and accepted who they are so by the <laughs> there's a little aside for a ray there but um you know people like him came into my life and helped me really see the beauty I wasn't seeing wow. and um, not just physical beauty, but internal beauty. Cause I was, I was really kind of, you know, that's one of those vestiges of, of that growing up when you don't, you know, when you move around so much, you don't, you know, once again, you don't develop those long-term friendships. Mm -hmm. You don't know who's being genuine with you or not. That's true. And, and being able to, finally kind of have that kind of breakthrough to be able to kind of develop that sense of discernment and realize that there is a value to what I bring. There is a value for me in the community. And, and um, so, but that feeling like you didn't fit in is, is what used to keep me up, but it doesn't anymore. Thank, thankfully, because I finally found that. So, wow, amazing, amazing! As it's interesting you saying that how people cross our path and suddenly it comes with this positive bug, like uh, you know, positive attitude and everything that help us to find our place and to feel more comfortable with ourselves and you know, open our mind and uh, you know, it, it's amazing, great. Yes, yeah, for sure. I have two questions left. Let's do it. Okay. Before the next question, tell me the very first time when you saw Madonna like on TV or in a video clip that you went like, oh my God, who is this? When when starts your Ooh. love for her that you go like, you went, you got straight away attached to her. Do you remember? I don't remember exactly what it was um but i do remember so i do remember um my first cassette singles <laughs> so um you know so so what just to kind of give give a history. So you had your 45 records, you know, the small seven inch records and all the singles used to come on those. You could buy just the one song. Okay. Well, once records were starting to phase out and before CDs are really taken off, they came out with cassette singles. So they were little cassettes that have one song. Yeah. And, you know, so I've got my collection of them over there. Um, and I still have this particular one, but, uh, my first three cassette singles were Donny Osmond, Soldier of Love, Bette Midler's Wind Beneath My Wings, and Madonna's Like a Prayer. Oh. And Madonna's Like a Prayer 
real of those three you know they're all three good songs um but that like a prayer just really stuck with me and then she followed it up with express yourself and followed it up with cherish and you know and then keep it together in vogue it's like it was just like this escalation of like okay i liked her before but now i really really love her you know i was i was what 10 at that point <laughs> uh you know nine or ten um I can't remember what, when it as I know it was like a 89, so I would have been 10. Um, but you know, just that era of Madonna is what really kind of solidified. And then you know, I got the Amaka collection, and um, <laughs> un unfortunately, my parents wouldn't let me get erotica, but I would sneak it behind the <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I still enjoyed the, the songs on it and and all that so but they did let me get bedtime stories which is the one after that because they did <laughs> let me get they uh did get me the cassette single for secret when it came out um so i had that uh so but yeah that's kind of it's kind of what uh it's not necessarily an event but it's an era that makes I sense <laughs> all right next question is what's the best advice have you ever given I think the best advice I've ever given somebody else is to breathe and relax and not fret the small stuff. Um, another aspect of me, which is kind of um, the lucky bear is kind of part of who I am is I actually do. I actually read cards. It's kind of like, you know, not tarot cards, but in that same thing. So there's, you know, through that, I've been able to like kind of coach some, some people through some stuff they're going through um, and, you know, and, and that kind of thing. So, but, you know, things that have come up during that, you know, are usually between me and the, me and them. But one thing that's come up over and over again is, and I kind of harp on this, we are all given specific talents and gifts by God, universe, whatever your belief system is, okay? Random chance if you're an atheist, okay? <laughs> but each of us has certain gifts and talents that, that are unique to us. And every one of those gifts and talents are designed to make the world better. And you may question that because your talent might be making a cake. And you may make a tasty, beautiful cake. But you think about, well, that's not making the world, that's not making a big difference in the world, but it is because you're bringing joy through that. So whenever you're using your talents, no matter how big or small they are, you feel that you're in the right place, that you get that, you get that positive energy when you use those talents for the right way. And one of the things I'm always like coaching people to do is to embrace those talents, to use those talents. And, you know, you know, you may, like I said, you may make a cake, but you know, you may have a beautiful voice and you may, you know, sing and all that. Just because you, you know, not every great singer is meant to be a Madonna, <laughs> you know, or, you know, Madonna's not the best singer. I, I admit that, but they're not a Mariah Carey. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, and but, but still, if you have a voice that that can bring joy to somebody, using it, you know, even if it's in karaoke or just among friends, that vibration of using it really brings a lot to your life, and you know. And, and, and it's, it's hard. And, it, and it's like, I, I can kind of convict myself on this because especially when you're, some of your talents are in the creative realm, there is this paralysis of perfection that sometimes comes in where you, you think it has to be perfect before you can share it. And it kind of paralyzes you for, for using it. You know, like if, if you're a writer, you write, it doesn't have to be perfect because you know, you're, you know, just write, let it, you know, that's what editing's for. <laughs> that's what that's all about. You know, 
And if, Hey, you make, if you're an amazing cook and you make one mistake while you're doing something, that's okay. You don't have to, it doesn't have to be perfect, you know, because if you're putting your heart into it and you're doing what you're, you're called to do and what your talents are, none of that matters because you're in the right flow. So if that makes any sense. <laughs> so absolutely. absolutely. I think whatever talent you have, it, it, it when you just put it out, it's people gonna gonna see it because they can see it genuine. And, and as you said, it doesn't it does it doesn't need to be in the spotlight, it doesn't need to be anywhere. It's just express yourself and the right people would see it would appreciate as well. Yeah. Yep. That's, and that's, and like I said, it even like you know, even like knitting a scarf, you know, that may impact one person. Yeah. You know, but that's still a talent. Not everybody can do that. <laughs> it's like I don't have the patience to do it. I admit it. <laughs> but <laughs> those that do you know there's there's something great that comes from that you know and it's just it's some people's talent is just be bringing that smile and that joy wherever they go Absolutely. that's a gift that's a talent and you know that obviously has that ripple effect of bringing more and more joy and more and more happiness so very good ready for the last one sure let's question let's do it Right, but before the last question, you mentioned about Prince. If you can pick just one song, your favorite song of Prince, which one that would be? Ooh. Just one. Yep. I mean, the, the immediate one that comes to mind is Sometimes It Snows in April. Okay. Um, you know... That's just the, the first one off the top of my head. Um, it is a beautiful ballad about loss and, you know, healing through that loss. Um, so that's, that's, that's it. That's, that's the one. Amazing. Last question is, is that a dream you always had? Is there a dream I've always had? You know, I've, my dreams have, have definitely changed throughout throughout the years mm -hmm. um and you know right now right now it's like i've been in such a slight transition space that like the old dreams don't make sense anymore and i really haven't formulated new ones yet if that makes any sense you know because okay. i because i really do love my life the where it is right now wow i mean Amazing. I, I have amazing friends in my life. Uh, you know, I've um, tapped into, I'm um, like starting to use my talents again in, in some of my areas. And, you know, yeah, I mean, there, there's some things that, that could be improved upon in my life. You know, I've been single for over 20 years, uh, you know, but, um, but anything that comes along kind of has to make sense and, and be right. And, you know, so, but I'm just kind of in that, that transition period right now where I haven't built the new dreams, if that makes any sense. <laughs> Absolutely. It does make sense. Absolutely. This, it's a powerful place to be. That's what I believe. Amazing. Yeah. Okay. It's not the end yet. Let's play now the word association game. Okay. I'm going to give away some words. Just tell me one word that comes to your mind. Quick thinking. Okay. Let's start with life. Life. Joy. Fear. Um, ignorance. Money. Necessary evil. <laughs> Somebody said that no longer ago. <laughs> <laughs> One word for love. Uh, oh. Needed. Sex. Mm -hmm. spiritual uh, that's okay. kind of where i am religion boxes politics <sighs> Oof. noisy friendship
partnership desire. We'll go with romance. How about that? Okay. Um, regret. None. Success. Peace. Wish. Reality. Happiness. A hug. Oh, that's so nice. I like that. <laughs> uh, one word for Nashville. Music. One word for Tennessee. Uh, mountains. USA. Hmm. Um. Growing. One word for your podcast that you are relaunching now. <laughs> uh, um, music. For some reason, I knew you'd say that. <laughs> <laughs> That's what one, it's about. So, <laughs> one word for Madonna. Uh, diva. And the last one now, music. One word. Soul. Beautiful. Let's pretend now I'm going to meet our best friend for a coffee and I'm going to ask your best friend. Define trick in one positive word and one negative word only. What your best friend would say. Uh, they would say love for positive. Mm -hmm. And for the negative, they would say crazy <laughs> I, like, I like that <laughs> let's play now trick and the magic box and you can ask me a question but before you ask him the question tell me um which was what was the last madonna song that you listened the last one the, the last one i listened to most recently yeah you listened to yeah rain I'll tell you my one. I because I had the interview last night with this lovely man from John Hesburg, and he's talking about Madonna, Madonna, and um, he talked about the music American Pie. And uh, today mm -hmm. I was coming back home. I was I was I was walking, and I just thought, oh my god, I would listen to it. And I put Madonna's uh, American. I haven't listened for quite a while actually, and it brought me so good, great, good energy. So yeah, that's my last one. Right, yeah. you can you can ask me a question now. Okay, so. If you could only have one album on a desert island for the rest of your life, what would that album be and why? Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Which <laughs> album that would be? You know what? Um, um, oh my God. I, it's so many news coming to my mind right now, too many albums. Um, you know, okay, I'm gonna go for the the last one actually that I will listen to. I was listen to. There was there's an, an album, um, Minister of Sounds, like a collection. Minister of Sounds is like a, I don't know if you if you know about it. It's like is is um they do like um um it's like clubbing, uh, different different kind of music. Mm -hmm. um, so when I arrived in London, uh, Minister of Sound, I remember a good friend of mine. He was listening a lot to those music and brings me. Uh, good energy. Um, it means you know those nostalgia moments. So I'll take mm -hmm. one of these. Is like uh, this album is called Classic Minutes of Sound, the classics of the two thousands. So it brings so much joy for me and uh, brings me these nostalgia moments where I feel great. So it's difficult to choose, but I'm gonna go for this one because for the last let's say three weeks. I've been listening to some listen to it sometimes, and it is is for some reason brings me this good energy. So I would go with it right now. But trust me, I would for me <laughs> imagine imagine for me it would be so difficult to choose one. Like imagine asking this question for you. My goodness, it would be quite hard to answer it. Oh yeah, yeah, because, <laughs> because it will it, because it, a lot of it does depend on what mood I'm in. Um, That's the th yes, the, I totally so. understand. 
extra points. And for some reason, this album, um, it just showed on my, on, my, uh, on my YouTube account. And I said, oh, let me click on it. And when I start clicking, you know, I can listen to songs like very often, like until I get a little bit of, uh, you know, a bit um, sick of it and I come back again. So, but this album for the last month, it has been my favorite. So I'll take this one just for me to be able to have these nostalgia moments that, uh, you know, it, it brings me good energy. So yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely understand that. So, you know, because you know, because it's like for me, you know, it can, you know, I have I have my like top ten that I could easily do, but like figuring out which one I would take, like today I would probably be garbage version two point you know, with you see? So the lead lead singer, and then another day it may be found as like a prayer, and another day it may be Johnny Mitchell's blue. Yeah. Or Dolly Parton's um, Halo and Horns, you know, it just depends on. It, what it depends. But I think it's those, it, it, when they come to us, you know, when they, for some reason, we it just, you know, we just connect again with the album. It brings this nostalgia moment, and that's the good feeling of it, isn't it? It, it, it takes yeah. you to different moments in your life for different reasons, sadness happiness you know melancholic and we like that we like for some reason we we feel those moments again in a different way yeah so i think yes. that's that's the, the great part and for me it's like that's one of those questions that that kind of gives me an insight of who you are you know Absolutely. because you know because depending on like what kind of album you pick you know kind of gives me an insight on what what calls you what drives you you know so that's just kind of so <laughs> did you enjoy the interview trick i did i appreciate the you the you making the time for for me with this no thank you so much i appreciate your time and thanks so much for being so kind and sweet and bring this you know this music knowledge for the last few you know i love it i love it and i think it's great before you go if you can share a positive message or anything that you live by you know just live authentically you know you are created to be who you are um you know no matter what your belief system is you you know you're don't try to fit into these boxes that people want to shove you into you're you're not shaped like a box you're not going to fit in one so just be yourself bring that joy share that joy you know even if you don't feel the joy you surround yourself with people that fill you up with that joy and it will it'll come amazing very good good luck with your podcast starting out again okay take it take <laughs> the best of it enjoy a lot and you keep in touch it was a pleasure okay it was a pleasure thank you take care have a great day bye bye you, you too bye. bye bye so did you like the show don't forget to give a like to share it and also don't forget to subscribe to the channel and if you'd like to be part of the show as well First, subscribe to our channel, and after that, just go to our website www.williamandthemagicbox.com and send us a request saying why would you like to be part of the show. And I see you there. Bye-bye. See you next time.